So welcome to our first edition of the Carpool Lane. Yeah, this is uh it's been a lot of testing and uh, pulling out of my hair. <laughs> yeah, so Chad's been working really hard to get this new setup and we're using Ecamm Live and we're gonna bring in some guests shortly. And so hopefully everything works. <laughs> but we wanted to cover a few things before we get to the main event. And we wanted to just let you know that this carpool lane we thought would be an appropriate title for this type of content mm -hmm. that we hope to do on a monthly basis and bring in experts or individuals who um, are in the RV world in some way or another. Mm -hmm. And we want to bring them on and we want to talk shop and we want to have them answer your questions and go over different RV topics. So let us know if you have any ideas for guests in the future mm -hmm. and we will um, hopefully have some fun and exciting things. Yeah, guests share. or topics or you yeah. know, things like that. Hopefully this uh, it will hopefully this will work out and you won't hate it. <laughs> also, we want to give you guys just a little bit of update. If you've been following us over the holidays, you know that we had a level two concussion. We had hernia surgery, and uh, we well, had a COVID Christmas. COVID Christmas. AKA Christmas, Christmas didn't was have canceled. Christmas. My daughter got COVID. Then my dad got COVID. Oh, it, yeah. it was a mess. It was yeah. a mess. So we are excited for all of that health stuff problems to be done and now I just still have my normal health stuff to deal with yeah but you're just a regular form of crappy yes yes <laughs> and so we are also wanted to touch base on yes we will be at the Florida RV Super Show we do not know exactly when we're going because yeah. we, we purposefully didn't make commitments or schedules this year for it since we have had so many issues going on we just want to wing it and go when we feel good so yeah so be sure to follow us on facebook mm -hmm. and instagram uh, because that's where we're going to post we might do some last minute kind of hey come find us in the 397th or come find us in the grand design area or at the bar <laughs> <laughs> that's a car um somebody asked what is carpool live and we it's just a name just for a our live streams that we thought was we thought was clever maybe it's not but it's because <laughs> we're bringing other people along for this ride with us and so that's why we call it carpool lane um carpool lane with changing lanes i don't know if yeah. you think of a better name let us know <laughs> and by the way speaking of the florida rv super show uh if you don't follow us on this, on social media you wouldn't have seen our recent volta post uh, mm -hmm. they're going to have a, a new a volta set up there in a I'm not sure which model it is, but it's a Momentum. And this Volta is what Grand Design is going to be offering. And it's uh, 6, 12, and 18 kilowatt hours. And the top two have a 6,400 watt inverter. Um, so it's a, going to be a pretty neat setup. Also, it charges via the truck alternator, special alternator. And they even have a rechargeable ATV. Wow. There, so well, I'm it's all to see it. batteries. Big. I think the one at the show actually has a 40 kilowatt hour. If you guys want to see the fully decked out Momentum with the Volta system in it, it will be in the Grand Design section of the Florida RV Super Show. So go check it out if you see the, the Look, folks there. Oh! It looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that screen. Can they see us though? Can they still hear us? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just not sure with this new setup we've got going on. If you see the folks at Volta, let them know that you heard about it from us. Because, just because. Yeah. <laughs> Any more um, catch-ups before we... Uh, that was it. Yeah, you might even see us Oh, there. real quick. Um, we still get a lot of people asking us or even angry that our <laughs> travel videos fall so far behind. We know they're behind. Like right now, we're about six months behind what we put out from where we currently are. And that's just because we do a lot of the how-to stuff and the DIYs and the tech stuff that pushes us behind but i am so thankful that we have that extra content backed up because we haven't been filming anything in the past month and a half so we'll get caught up yeah. sooner than later but you know just bear with us and hopefully you understand um there's nothing we can do about it i mean we want to share all of it's our by design it's just how we do it i mean we're yeah. not we we create um video content that we like to kind of package almost like a tv show versus like a vlog where somebody's like hey this week i'm here and blah 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 and they follow on in sequence we're, we're a little bit different than that yeah we're different. We're different. If you want to see, uh, we're going to start doing these lives monthly, though, so that's how you can keep up with us uh, that's right. more yeah. in more real time. And lastly, right now, it's right now. Right now. 
<laughs> uh, and lastly, before we bring on our guests, we want to thank our moderators. We've got quite a few on this evening because this is a new format, so we want to make sure we have our bases covered. And of course, you guys have seen Getaway Couple is on here. Thank mm -hmm. you, Jason and Ray. Um, Phil and Stacy are on here, so thank you, you, me, and the RV. We have Garrett, who is on from the NRVTA, to answer questions about that you might have about the NRVTA. Um, are you bringing up Daisy as the moderator? Ow. Yeah. <laughs> I think he just hurt himself. Oh. I don't know. Um, Tom and Cherie from EnjoyTheJourney.life are planning on being here, but I think they got stuck in the rain traveling. There's the best moderator ever, Daisy. <laughs> Somebody said Daisy, Daisy, Daisy. And then got a we couple also, requests for Daisy. And then so. we also have Corey and Jesse from Finding Our Someday, who we're going to talk about a little bit later in the show, so stay tuned for that. And we also have rick and roger who you're going to see a little bit later in some interviews and so let's get going with our guinea pigs for this new format that we have are you guys ready todd and tony because we're uh, i was going to show oh. I, I forgot we have one more thing I lied. real quick hold on i want to make sure that everybody knows about our uh, get that scene up there our website and how to subscribe there it's because a lot of these things we only send out to our email list uh, so be sure to go to our website. You can subscribe here. You can subscribe down at the bottom here. And uh, also, don't forget our FAQ out here yes. and our search feature. So if you have like an inverter question, just bam, hit inverter. Because honestly, honestly, guys, we get a lot of emails and a lot of comments and questions uh, that sometimes takes us a while, right, to respond because they build up and we get backlogged. But if you go to our website and you do a, a search for the FAQs, a lot of times it's going to be in there and answered for you already. So go check that out. And one last thing before we bring in our special guest. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. <laughs> Don't forget to click like. Don't oh, forget to subscribe yeah. on YouTube. That thing really helped. That, those two things really help us out a lot. Yeah. Uh, as far as our uh, algorithm and YouTube and all that good stuff. So please I gotta do that. Say, I'm always nervous when we do these lives. And then we well, get going and I'm like, we're just hanging out with all of our friends. So it's pretty cool. Chilling, drinking a beer. Drinking a beer. Dogfish head 60 minute, if you're okay. wondering. Okay. All, All right. right. Hey, so let's 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 test out this thing. Hopefully their audio and video comes through fine. Okay, Garrett. This is yeah. we're switching <laughs> over. We're switching over. Uh, so here <laughs> we go. Fingers crossed that this works. With, uh, Todd and Tony from the NRVTA. Hey guys, can you hear us? Okay. We can hear you. How you doing? It works. Oh, it how's works. How's it going? <laughs> awesome. I'm so excited. So guys, good. most of you probably know these two characters already, but if not, it's Todd Henson and Tony Flamia. Flamia. Did, Flamia. I, do, did I do it right? Of, of the National RV Training Academy. Friends of ours and awesome people and the whole crew over there at the NRVTA is awesome. And we thought, there were no better guests to bring on as our guinea pigs for the first carpool lane <laughs> than you guys. So thank you for being here. Absolutely. We love Appreciate being it. guinea pigs, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know? So do you want we're, to just jump right into it? Or? Yeah, we're going to, uh, just for the people who are on the line here, we're going to kind of cover two main topics today. Um, and the okay. first one is... Do you want to real quick let them give a quick spiel about what the NRVTA is? That's a good idea. For those of you out there that don't know. Tell us. Can you guys what, give us your elevator what uh, pitch is or the, not? What is the Nerverta? Well, we I mean, we can get right down to business if you want, but uh, <laughs> you want to take the, uh, the history. We have this beautifully laid out how we're going to do things. And man, we just went right to point three. So Did we? Um, Did we skip something? Yeah, Sorry. So let's do it. You want to go over the... Uh, what we, Sure. Well, so NRVTA uh, was uh, birthed from uh, Terry Cooper back in 2014 when he stopped uh, teaching at the local college. Took uh, what he was teaching at the college on the road. Uh, we thought it would just simply be a Texas thing and maybe the few states surrounding it. And never since then, it's just simply taken off. So there's the elevator speech. Nice. That was a very short, a very short, that was right? a short and, building. And, well, we were and, on point three. I didn't want to waste time. Zar, and also I want to say, guys, if you didn't see our video where where Chad actually takes the fundamentals course at the NRVTA, go check that out because it was a great experience and an awesome it facility. Was, it was so. a really I, everything was great. Even the snacks were fantastic. <laughs> That's twice he's mentioned the snacks. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's that that, that whole uh, 
grab the snacks and fill out the form and eat like a pig when she can't be there to tell me no. That's oh. awesome. <laughs> All right, you ready? So we wanted to chat with you guys uh, about what the most common things you're seeing out there as far as repairs go. Right. Well, we know that that's going to be kind of situational based on the weather. Like we're, we're all experiencing uh, winter right now. And the number one topic is going to be furnaces, right? We get tons of issues, tons of calls on furnaces. A lot of these we can kind of mitigate or take care of ourselves uh, before having to call out a tech. So furnaces being number one um, in the summer, we know that's air conditioning and then just scattered throughout the number three topic is going to be uh water systems yeah and you know when when i guess that would be a good time to bring up if you do need to get a hold of the tech uh, we actually have a very handy tech finder now so if at rvta that's the credentialing body if you come to our school the national army training academy you become rvta certified and now finally there's a way that you can find a mobile RV tech within your area just by searching. I know I'm over just the top. straight <laughs> way over there now. I mean, way to jump. Todd, how do I fix this? Down. You know, we got a tech finder. <laughs> yeah. No, we actually have that somewhere, right, Chad? Yeah, let me bring it up. I'll bring yeah. it up. We're right. jumping out of line. Well, That's we just thought right. since we were skipping points. <laughs> you so guys know we, me. Do we have if it we, up? If we, if we have an order of what we're talking about, I stick to it. <laughs> if there was a teleprompter, there I would is. read every word. All right, so here's, the, uh, here's the, the tech brief, finder you know, definition. Did you want me to go in and talk about, you know, some of these tips or was there specific questions or, you know, well, uh, I, think we'd I just like, don't want I to think, step on what you may ask. Well, I think no. we'd like to know um, with that in mind that furnaces right now and, and water heaters, water systems, what are some things that the general RVer can do to prevent having to call you guys? Okay. Oh, okay, question. for for furnaces, two things. Uh, one is the furnace itself does not have an air, fil air filter. I mean, I'll say 99% of all RVs does not have a filter for the furnace. It's, I mean, it, it's kind of getting in the weeds, but it's a safety issue. We need to have as much airflow as possible, so they don't want to restrict that airflow. But it is a big fan. I mean, it, it blows air throughout the whole house. So there's forced air and it's sucking in air. Now let's think about where your furnace is. If you're in a fifth wheel, it's gonna be you know somewhere locked behind um, the false wall in your storage bay. And they do not clean up there. Not only that, but you have air coming inside from the rig. Uh, if you're in a towable, it's gonna be you know somewhere under a cabinet. Same thing with the motorhome. The biggest issue or the biggest uh, preventative maintenance measure we can do is keep that cabin clean, okay? So just like our air conditioner where we have an air filter, and I recommend getting up and cleaning your coils twice a year, we need to have that same thing with our furnace. One of the biggest issues we have is getting a lot of junk um, uh, fuzz, uh, what, what do we call those, <laughs> dust bunnies, or everything else, Wood hair, chips. all of that stuff. Animal gets in dander. There. Animal dander. Animal yep. dander. All of that gets into that uh, whole house fan and across that cell switch, and that causes tons of problems that we ourselves uh, can basically be um, uh, proactive on. Get down there with a vacuum cleaner and clean that up, especially um, when we're at the tail end of summer. We know we're getting into winter. We know we're about to turn that on is to get down there each season and go ahead and vacuum that area up. The second thing, uh, and this is kind of tricky, and that is during the summer months uh, on the furnace, I recommend going ahead and putting on those uh, dauber screens. Now, mm -hmm. I, will, I, will I will let you know that both uh, Suburban and Dometic will void the warranty if you have the dauber screens on while you're using it. Well, I don't agree with that. I do need to let you know <laughs> that that is the case. So what they recommend is, is, you know, put it on during the summer because that's when the insects are out. Take it off in the winter because there are no insects, but that would prevent dauber nests and paper wasp nests from accumulating on the inside, which causes yet again for a call for a technician to come out there. So those two things, if we could do that, um, clean it up 
and keep those dauber screens on during the summer mm. we could probably prevent a lot of technicians from coming out and taking care of our furnaces you know with the furnace todd i never knew what that grill was in the cabinet and it actually comes off yep. and that's what you're talking about cleaning on the inside i went three years wondering why is there a vent on my cabinet yeah you know maybe it had something to do with the stove you know that right was some kind of or on a fifth well sometimes you got those steps yeah and so you, you have that air that air pocket right there. like and, where's that going right and you mentioned the sail switch which is a switch that could get gunked up so there's not much that can go wrong but if you didn't know that you were supposed to clean up around there that's that's a call that you'd probably end up making to a tech that could be prevented it's not the easiest thing to get to what's sad is once yeah. you pull the the furnace out it's it's relatively simple but getting to it disconnecting it doesn't make for a great day and awesome. i'll, I'll, I'll say that we're we're, yes. we're guilty <laughs> we're guilty of leaving our dauber screens on for four years straight <laughs> we've never had a problem well, we've never had a, we've never had we've never <laughs> like had, said, had a dauber uh, yeah we've heard that about the warranty um i also want to say that guys if you're not familiar uh, Todd and Tony do the Todd's Tech Tip Tuesdays on social media for the NRBTA. So make sure you follow them because they do a lot of good stuff like preventative maintenance and things like we were just talking about. We also do videos that have to do with regular maintenance for the mm -hmm. ACs, refrigeration, um, hopefully furnace. We haven't done one of those yet. No, we've done some furnace repair stuff. You yeah. You mentioned the, uh, when we had a spare parts video, we talked about the sail switch and the, uh, the thermocouple, the thermal limit switch. I forget what that official name is, but those two things are in a single circuit, the most common things to go wrong. So we keep spares. Do we want to say, do we want to show what our two RV techs have to say? Yeah. So, is hey, that next? That, that is next. So, we are, well, I want to ask one more question real quick. Okay about water leaks okay. uh, are there any anything besides just getting up in there and looking that someone can do i know that for us we replaced our um check valve but only after it broke and started leaking and just was a big mess i'm um, wondering if that should right. just be a preventive maintenance thing yeah so you know uh, there's a couple things it one way to find out if you have a, uh, a water leak now sometimes you can see it but most of the lines that we have is not visible and if you think you have a water leak you're just not sure go ahead and fill up your holding tank turn on your water pump if all of your faucets are off that water pump's going to reach its pressure say 55 psi and then it's going to shut off if you hear that water pump randomly kick on for just a couple seconds and start vibrating What's happened is, is the water pressure has dropped below 55 PSI and the water pump has kicked back on to seek that pressure. If you hear that randomly come on from time to time and you know you don't have any uh, water faucets open, well, then you know you have a leak. The next question is figuring out where it is. So um, that's one way to look. Now, when we're talking about trying to find them, this is where it's, it's pretty difficult. And a lot of times um, we can see where the water damage is, but water travels downhill and it may not, the leak may not show itself. It may appear um, it, closer to where the water damage is than where it really is. And that's where it gets difficult to locate that water. One tip that you can do is, you know, take little strands of cloth and stick that over your fittings, tie cloth onto the fittings, and then come back in a few hours. If you cannot find any water leaks, but you see water damage, tie cloth around some of the fittings. If the cloth gets wet, then you know that it's that fitting that's causing the problem. Very cool. Very cool. Well, let's yep. cut over. We also did uh, some interviews with, a, with two different techs uh, that I went to school with, uh, Rick Root, and Roger Malone, they have both since gone to the school, graduated, got their certification, and started their own businesses. So yes. we did a couple of interviews with them, and we have a couple of excerpts that we want to show you. And Also, Rick and Roger are live in the chat right now, so if you have any questions for them, they are techs that are out in the field right now, so feel free to ask away. So there's Rick's mobile RV services right there, and then I think I saw Roger with Bigfoot. He is in the chat as well. So if you have questions for them, go ahead and ask. And do we want to ask Garrett to mute them? Just no, I'll, in case? no, I'll mute him. Okay. okay. All right. We're going to play this little quick excerpt, yeah, excerpt <laughs> of Rick and Roger. All right, here we go. We have Rick Root 
on the line here with us. I met Rick when I did the fundamentals course last year at the NRVTA. How are you doing, Rick? I'm doing great. How are y'all doing? Awesome. Doing awesome. great, doing great. And guys, just so you know, Rick's business is Rick's Mobile RV Services. His website is on the screen right there, rrvis.com. As we talk about making money on the road, because a lot of people want to know, how, well, how can I make money and do this full-time traveling thing? It's cool because like you said, you can go anywhere, drop a pin, and people can find you that way. Yeah, and real quick, by drop a pin, I'm gonna put on the screen here. This is the NRVIA inspector finder. So this allows people who are inspectors to put their location in there so that when a uh, prospective client wants to get their RV inspected, they do a search, they go, oh, hey, Rick's in California or wherever you happen to be. So I realize you probably do this in your local area, but if you wanted to travel for six months or whatever and take your business on the road, you could certainly do that. That was the selling point to me if I was going to get into this and make money. Being able to drop my pin where I'm going to be at, you know, a week or two in advance before I get to that location, I can start scheduling inspections while I'm still at home. How long did it take you to ramp up once you graduated from the class? It took me less than two weeks. I was already working on my business. I dropped my pin and literally 12 hours later, I had three inspections. That's so, <laughs> uh, so awesome. I love that. I like that. That's awesome. I love that. I want to kind of piggyback on what we were talking with Todd and Tony about on some of the most popular tech calls mm -hmm. that you guys are seeing out in the field. And I understand right now being January in Florida is a little different than if there's an RV tech up here where we are in the mountains. What would you say your top two? AC's number one, definitely. And then plumbing, number two. Plumbing number two, did you get that? Plumbing number two. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> oh, we have 12 year old boy humor. <laughs> <laughs> some of the minor issues with AC and even with the plumbing that We've covered in some of our videos, mm -hmm. and I know that Todd and Tony with the NRVTA on the Tech Tip Tuesdays, they cover that stuff too. You might not have to call a tech out if you keep up with your maintenance on some of these things. Mm -hmm. Your maintenance with your refrigerator, your maintenance with your ACs and your generators and all of that stuff mm -hmm. that could keep you from having to call somebody out. With all the years that we've had a grand design, warranty work and stuff like that that needs to be done, we know that they'll let us call in a mobile tech and then they will, they have in the past covered our service fee. And we've done it both ways. We've done it where we paid the mobile tech and got reimbursed. And mm -hmm. we've also had it where they worked with Korean Design directly and got paid. So is that something that you see that is common or is that something that's like more of a Grand Design customer service thing? Because I don't know what other companies are doing. Yeah. I have found Grand Design just from my limited experience in the business with tech work. Grand Design knocks it out of the park. I literally have a customer right now. I told him, let me call Grand Design. I spoke to Grand Design, told him, gave him the VIN, told him what the issue was. And they said, just send us a uh, estimate and we'll get it approved and you can go do the work. The client didn't have to do anything. Okay, next up guys is Roger Malone and his business is Bigfoot Mobile RV Services. And this is another friend that we met when you were taking the courses at the NRVTA. Mm -hmm. If you saw our solar video, he's the really, really tall guy that was handing me solar panels on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's where the Bigfoot comes from. Yeah, I, I was going to say, hence the Bigfoot. <laughs> Thanks for being on with us. Absolutely. Glad to be here. Uh, what are the most common things that you're seeing right now or the most common repairs that you're getting called out for? If I had to say a top three, it's definitely ACs. Well, you can camp in Florida year round just about everywhere, pretty much year round. So ACs, probably water, water heater issues, and uh, furnace. That would be the three that I would say, because you know, m most of the time when people get in Florida and it does get a little chilly at night, they're reaching for that furnace. If they're not interested in plugging in that heater. They want to turn that furnace on. So mm -hmm. that would be the top three that, that what I'm seeing you know, on the west coast of Florida, for sure. Something that I do, you've got the owners right there beside you. They're wanting to see what's behind that wall. I've never had that wall out. They're wanting to look. When I do that and they're there, I show them, hey, look, all these, you know, on your water heater, all these 90 degrees are plastic, change them to brass. Mm -hmm. You know, you've seen how it easy, easy it is to take the wall out. So I, I do try to go with the owner if they're there. 
I'm two two weeks out, almost three weeks out on service calls, on you know being booked. So I don't mind helping the owner, giving them a little information to help them. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Order. Hey, we're back. <laughs> Surprise. Uh, we were, we, yeah. Sorry. Hey. <laughs> we're back. Uh, so thank you, Rick and Roger, for giving us your input into the question, same question that we asked Todd and Tony. So it's like you guys are all on the same page. I mean, for Roger and for Rick, it was, of course, ACs versus furnace, but there is some furnace activity going on in Florida because it does get cold at night. So. A little bit. We use our heat pump, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, do we want to move on to the next question? Yeah, so the next topic, we are going to cut to the video first and then get your guys' input to see if you guys agree on this. And it has to do with COVID builds. COVID, air, well, air quotes. the reason we decided to ask this question is because if you are on any kind of owner's forum, it's probably a hot topic for you because that's... I see so much of it. Like, you know, a lot of people have problems i guess with their rvs and now everybody's saying well there's been you know so much increase in demand and increase in production that the quality is is falling and dropping and so we wanted to find out from the techs in the field if they actually are seeing that as being the case yep so let's cut to rick and roger first and then we'll come todd back to you guys. and tony prepare your answer <laughs> Are you seeing a lot more of uh, people wanting inspections for brand new RVs? And are you seeing a lot more on the tech side for brand new RV builds? I don't think so. I mean, I always tell everybody, you have the crews that are in a rush to get out of work on Friday and the crews that maybe party a little too hard coming in on Monday morning. So you, there's always going to be a, a one-off here and there, but most of the stuff that I'm seeing on new rigs is just little mistakes and it could happen to anybody the guy or gal didn't go all the way to the end of you know the front cap seam with sealant and it just needs to be topped off there so Mm -hmm. what i do see is the pdis that are being performed by a lot of the dealerships are not in depth at all yeah. yeah. So. so that's interesting, but that's really good to know. It's nice to yeah. to hear firsthand that you're not seeing that. So that's, that's good. And, you know, in, in the increase in awareness of it could just be the fact that there's just a lot of people buying RVs. Yeah. There's a lot of people with expectations that your RV is going to be built like your home is. Mm-hmm. And the guys and gals constructing these things, I think, are doing a, a really good job. The issue is they're getting driven down the road to be delivered and things are going to break while they're being driven down the road, whether it's yeah. to drive it to the delivery spot or the dealership, or you're driving it down the road because you bought a brand new, you know, in Indiana, it, mm-hmm. things are going to happen. It's awesome to hear how well you're doing and how busy you are. Thank you so much for taking the time on a Sunday to chat with us. There's so many RVs out there now. I think in November, they, I want to say there was over 55,000 RVs that were produced the most ever, I think, in November of 21. Wow. Touching on that month being like the, the most RVs produced ever, and everybody's talking about how the quality has gotten so bad. And so I'm curious to ask if you're seeing a lot of problems with new builds out there. Anything, I guess, maybe late 19, early 20 and newer, maybe two RVs that I've worked on. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the, Rick said the same thing to us, really. He said he's not seeing this whole problem with really poorly built, rushing through the build process RVs. So it's interesting to know that techs and inspectors that are out there that really aren't seeing that. It's a variety of years and a variety of makes. And it's, you know, it's like I tell everybody, I, I told a guy today, he had a DRV, which is a great product. And uh, he goes, well, I'm having an air conditioner problem. I'm having a water problem got a water leak you're bouncing down the road at at 55 60 miles an hour none of them's bulletproof Mm -hmm. you know have problems you know you just got to expect it and i hear it too you know in my on facebook and in my world but i'm just i'm just not seeing the old the the covid built unit and with the tech that's good though i mean that's that's actually good to hear especially for people who are really thinking about buying something new right now, but then they're holding off because they don't want to get one of these poorly built RVs. And so it's nice, it's just nice to hear yeah. 
it's a different perspective, so it's good. Uh, and we're glad that it agreed with Rick because now we don't have to put you guys into a cage match. Yeah. <laughs> we really appreciate it. We know you're super busy, and so we appreciate you taking the time. I was glad to do it. All right. Well, first of all, thank you, Rick and Roger, again. And thank you, Michelle H., for the super chat. We appreciate that. Yeah, if we're missing any of those I going know. by because we have so much we're coordinating so, here. So much going on. Um, oh, I was thinking of something, and gosh darn it, I forgot. Cause... Well, while you think of that. Oh, I know. I wanted to give a thank you to, again to our moderators, Phil and Stacy, you, me, and the RV. Getaway couple, Jason and Ray, and people are saying they miss you, Jason and Ray, so maybe you could start doing videos again. I mean, what the heck? Just, just kidding. We love you guys. Or just come hang out with us and you can be in our video. Finding Our Someday <laughs> is on. We've got um, Chris, our awesome VA, is on, and yes, Garrett thanks. from the NRVTA is on. So. Yep. Lots, right. of, lots of people watching. Oh, I also, I'm so sorry. I also want to say, we know that the audio quality on those videos we just played was bad. We were really new when we filmed those um those, well, we're, we're still those really interviews. new. We're, this is our first time <laughs> ever filming, right? Exactly. No, but, but um, so anyhow, sorry about that. We hope to do better with those in the future. So Todd and Tony, you guys have been in the RV tech game a lot longer. Those guys just went to school with me and kind of came in during COVID. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion, knowing the beforehand really well and now the after post COVID or during COVID, whatever we're calling it, what are your thoughts on that COVID build theory? Well, I'm personally happy to hear that's what they said because you know you see a lot of things in, in forums and a lot of times people get frustrated no, yeah, uh, because maybe some trim or something has you know, come come off or maybe there's something that doesn't make the camper uncampable but it's kind of a frustration anyways but it's really not um, a, a major catastrophe right um, we haven't seen a whole lot of that stuff coming out due to COVID per se um, but just to kind of spin the, the this whole dialogue we have seen manufacturers come to us um you know reaching out to, to figure out you know how do we how do we uh, educate our consumer to help them you know have a better camping experience and uh really encouraged by the level of commitment some of these manufacturers are taking uh, especially you know alliance just came out here and they want to be able to put like a training package together for their community um to just to help them you know because we all know they're not going to be perfect they're not going to be built like your house and it's an earthquake every time you go from point a to point b so that that, that was a really positive thing yeah. uh, and for us i mean we know because we get called in with fema and we've been doing that for years on brand new units we have to inspect them and in the inspection reports we find that 30 percent have some life safety issues we have to bring in our own teams to actually do the technical work so I'm not sure. I think I think you did hit it on the head where we see more awareness. There's more people coming into it with some expectations. Previously, I think it was about nine months is what the average first time RVer uh, actually studied uh, the RV industry before they made their first purchase. And I bet you, you see that sales cycle close quite a bit. Does that mean that we just accept it? No. I mean, and that's where we're working with the industry. We're working mm -hmm. with end yeah. users as well. If we can make individuals smarter with their rigs to be able to make some of those repairs and know that they're there but also work with the industry to let them know what's going on then hopefully we'll have a lot better uh, type rig coming out um, in the next few years yeah one of our big missions is you know aside from training technicians and inspectors is also training the end user the consumer to be able to have a better camping experience because you know 80 percent of the problems that you're gonna come run into are easy to find and easy to fix. You just need to know how. And that's that's what that's kind of been, you know, our our, our mission for, for many years now yeah. is training the end user. And it's been Yeah, that fun, the fundamentals course is just an amazing an amazing week of just a, a brain dump of you know all the major systems on an RV, some basic electricity training. Um, I think it's awesome for any RVer to go to. And you even learned a lot, even though you already knew quite a bit, there was still quite a bit that you learned going to. Oh yeah, that's why I love, I mean, most of what I learn, I, I, I learn through experimentation or just trying stuff or, or YouTube or whatever. Or asking Todd. But <laughs> that going to an actual, officially, I, I just text Todd, uh, going to an actual um, 
class, it just it fills in all those little gaps and kind of brings everything together. I thought that was really cool. Um, well, there you have it. Do we want to... Sorry, this is a new thing here. <laughs> We're ahead of schedule, guys. So yeah, it's... it means we got more time for beer. Teresa, Tom, yeah. thank you so much. You got more time for beer. <laughs> oh my gosh, there no, we have more time question. for questions. We have more time for questions. I know what question you're going to ask. It's a, I already we already highlighted it too. I bet it's the same one. So uh, what we're going to do now is we have some questions that people posted on our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Yes. Social. And yeah. some questions that we're seeing in the live chat, which. Yeah is something that I want to address because somebody asked, are we ever going to do a live stream where we where we just basically interact with the chat? We were just talking about that. We were just talking about that tonight. And yes, we would like to do that. So hopefully we'll, we'll do something like that soon. Yeah, our next live might just be a uh, happy hour Q&A where we just take questions in the live <laughs> chat and uh, drink beer. Oh. <laughs> He'll drink the beer. Okay, so let's get to I the questions we were asked yeah well, I, he is yeah. i'm ready um <laughs> yeah so let's get to some of the questions we were asked earlier this week and then we'll get to some of the questions in the chat yep all right our first question is from grandpa ed or grandpaid 80 <laughs> <laughs> has a question for todd we have a new 2022 Grand Design Reflection 303 RLS came with a tankless water heater. I didn't know they were doing that, which uses a lot of water when using the fresh water tank. Uh, does he have any suggestion on cutting down water usage or what model to change for a tanked heater? Well, and it, it just depends on uh, the, the um, t model of tankless he has. Now, most of those, they should not be using extra water. Yeah, I don't uh, think because so. Because it is tankless, you know, it should yeah. just be going straight through. But if he's adding cold water, if, if the water's too hot, in other words, what's coming out from the tankless is too hot, he's adding cold water to cool it down, you may want to see, and I know that it sounds basic, but if he can actually lower the out, uh, outflow temperature, instead of 120 degrees, you know, maybe set it to 114, you don't have to turn on the cold water. Therefore, you're using less water. Um, but it shouldn't be any more because if you're using your water pump, you're still roughly three gallons per minute. I've seen some yeah, of those are coming with, there's actually a, um, it's a, it's a valve on the shower head that actually recycles the water until it gets um, warm, warm yeah. back into the freshwater tank. You may want to check and see if there's a valve there too. Yeah. Yeah, I actually saw, and this is completely unrelated, but related. Um, I saw a shower recently that recycles 80% of its water. It has the drain in the bottom, it sucks it back up, filters it, and spits it back out at you. That'd be that'd be cool for an RV. Well, that sounds just don't, gross. Just don't pee in yeah. the shower. But the, the one I have in my rig, it actually, it actually circulates it before it even comes out. So you kind of keep your hand there to see if it's warm. Um, that, I don't know if I'd want everything that's in my pee trap on my face. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. yeah, I want to say a quick thank you. I saw a super chat from Michael and now from Mark. Thank you both very much. Yeah, thanks guys. That's, that's awesome. Um, All right. I'm, I'm kind of with you there, uh, Tony. <laughs> but just think of the water savings. No. <laughs> All right, let's jump to our next question, which is from Jenny Reed. What is the most neglected general maintenance item you see? Sometimes simple things that are forgotten can make a big difference. In the summer, it's going to be the air conditioner. Definitely the air conditioner coils. A lot of us don't know to get up there and clean it. I know that you guys did a video on it. If they watch your video, then they're alerted to it. But that is one of the biggest issues that one of the biggest things that we just simply don't take care of. It's on the roof. We don't mess with it. Mm hmm. So. Yeah, we had, uh, we had a comment recently on that video, I think, where he says, you know, I saw this and I went up there and I've had this RV for like six years and he had like an inch of yeah. just stuff on that, on that uh, coil. Well, and even us, I mean, we get so busy, right, that we forget to do that stuff. So you have to remember, but we remembered the hard way when we were in Vegas and it was 120 degrees, Phil and Stacy, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. um, and in order to help, fix like in, in in order to have the acs running as efficiently as they could be 
he got up on the roof and he still did the maintenance and cleaned it out. There was mm -hmm. a little bit on there. It wasn't it needed, bad. It needed but a little bit, yeah. It needed some attention and we should have done it earlier, but we just get so busy and we're all guilty of that. So if we could just make a schedule and a routine to make sure we do it. Yeah, we're gonna, we'll have There's a- There's nothing uh, better than the fresh smell of clean coils too. <laughs> uh, you ever notice that or is that just me? No, that's true. Okay. okay. I've, I went out on limb there. That and clean underwear. <laughs> just get real close. Just just don't cut your nose on the coils. Don't you know? What? <laughs> don't don't get I too like close to, do, to it. You mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh goodness. Um, All right, let's go to the next let's question. Go to the, yeah. On that note, I'm just kidding. You want to read it? Oh no. Okay, uh, from Chris Julie something La France. I think it's this is Chris and Julie. Baton La France. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, heard a rumor if you have beds, couches, dinettes on slides, do not use them if the slides are in. Is it true the balancing is only set for use when the slides are out? Does the answer vary by manufacturer and model? There's a lot of embedded questions. Uh, does, does it doesn't make sense that you can't use it with the slides in? Thanks. Love do, your channel. Love we, you, Chris and Julie. Do we want to say something before we ask Todd? No, let's see what they say. Then we'll cut. We'll, we'll cut to uh, finding our someday's okay. picture. Okay. All right. Messing with slides <laughs> enough, I know that especially with fifth wheels and travel trailers, the slide floor is not flush with the floor once it's all the way in. The front may be touching. The back may be actually held up by the railing system, whatever it may be, the Schwintec or the uh, through frame slides. And so there's going to be a slight gap between there. Now, does it mean that if you get on there that it's going to immediately break? But I can guarantee you that over time, that piece of plywood that's down there will begin to warp. Or you may end up seeing, of course, marks uh, as you're sliding in and sliding out because you're putting some undue weight on there. Just rule of thumb, if it is a fifth wheel or a travel trailer um, and the slides are in, don't sit in there. Now, class A's may be a little bit different uh, because they are larger and because they do not have the same system in most cases, the floors may be um, just a little bit hardier uh, than, uh, of course, our uh, fifth wheels and travel trailers. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna limit my answer to fifth wheels and travel trailers saying just rule of thumb, don't get in them um, if they're all the way in. Now, if it's a bed, it's a little bit different. Um, it's made a little bit different, designed different, but if it's the couch or whatnot. Um, and if you like to eat for a living, chances are just recommend it. Don't, don't step in there if it's closed. If you when like you to eat. There. No, okay. no there's, I, I think you're right on, right on the money there. When we travel in a class A, of course, you know, everything was in, the floor was much thicker, thicker, but when we bought our fifth wheel, yeah. And I went to go around the kitchen. I thought I was on a trampoline. It yeah. was just mushy. And I was like, I'm going to break this. I was surprised in the difference. But a travel trailer, it's not really supposed to be used when it's when the slides are in. Class A, you're kind of walking back and forth while it's driving. I mean, it's literally just a um, you know wood box is all that it is. <laughs> yeah. So. It was funny that I, I, I saw this question to put into our live stream here. And like the very next day, I'm scrolling through YouTube and I see Finding Our Sunday with ruined our floor or something yeah. along those lines. I was like, oh, I got to see what this is about. And this is a picture of what that looked like. And what happened there was they uh, used the couch, I think, and they're on the chat. So if you want to give them give them crap, go ahead. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Corey and Jesse and the girls are awesome. Yeah. Um, but I guess he, he was sat on the couch and it pushed the floor down. And then when the slide went out, there was a screw sticking out from the slide ski and it just gouged, just, just ripped out the uh, floor. So that was, I know that's, uh, that stuff is just gut wrenching. I just, I, I feel for you. Guys, we will have a link for their video in the description below. Yep. If you're not familiar with Finding Our Sunday, you got to check them out. I mean, they are amazing photographers, videographers, storytellers. You got to go check them out because it's just their stuff is beautiful. It sometimes makes me angry that their I stuff do. is I do. So, I get angry. So I was like, good. oh, I hate them. Oh, those <laughs> pictures are just too good. I mean, we mean that because yeah, we, in, we in a good way. Guys. And your drone, your drone footage is amazing. Yeah, and, and we hate you. And we hate you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, go check Ob that video. Out. Obviously, in jest. Yes. So let's jump to our next question. I want to really. 
I really want to say, or real quick want to say thank you to Luke. I saw a super chat come in um, a little while ago, and I just want to say thank you. And I do hear a little bit of feedback, right, going on. Oh, and, and Teresa and Michael and Mark and Luke, yes, and Michelle. Wow, thank you all. Are you hearing feedback? Are you hearing feedback A little from bit, them? but it's low. Okay. Uh, so the next question is from Tom Nichols, and I kind of thought this too. Why aren't three-way three refrigerators offered anymore? Or so I guess whether DC, AC, or propane? Correct. Yeah. I, don't, I think it just simply has to do, yeah, with a three-way, um, you can go propane, uh, 120 volt, or 12 volt as a cooling source. Now, you'll know me. I know this is not part of changing lanes, but I will tell you, don't drive with your propane on. So that leaves you only with 120 volts. If you have a three-way, man, wouldn't that be great? You can just yeah. go with a 12-volt system, right? So We don't drive um, with I our propane on, on, by the way. It's simply with the technology. <laughs> we have better 12-volt compressors, um, and we're now seeing compressor-style refrigerators. Problem is, just like with anything first-generation stuff, we're having some issues. People really have to learn a lot about their batteries, and we're running on 12 volts. You can have a low battery and still get things to work, but what we'll have is, of course, if a volts drop or our amps go up, and that's what burns out motors. And so once we get this dialed in, we'll see an end to the um, RV absorption style refrigerator. We'll, we'll get back into compressors. They're just a, a lot more efficient nowadays. You feel like it's gonna go all 12 volt? <clears throat> I think it was some, or we'll go with 120 volt with a small inverter, hmm. you know, a very small what do you, uh, inverter. What do you think about the uh, the mods from uh, JC Refrigeration? Have you, you seen those, I'm sure? Yeah, they are good. I mean, the great thing about them is uh, the coils themselves are really great. Uh, that they have, but the mods that they actually offer, um, you know, with the 12 volt conversion or the 120 volt conversion, we actually have some, we actually test with them. We were really surprised at such a low amp draw what they would pull. Yeah, I so, read that. I was, um, I was really yeah, impressed. They're, they're great. Yeah, I know that our next RV will have a residential fridge. Yes. And I don't know if you yeah. think that we drive with our propane on, but we do not. Just we did for our I first year at all. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, next question. Let's see here. Are we on? Heather. We have two. Yeah, Heather. there we go. Yeah. From Heather Jones. Would love to ask the RV Academy people, that's you guys, uh, if they could make specific <laughs> things, if they could make specific things, I'm assuming she means topics available for ad hoc purchase instead of the full Academy. I'd like to, they'd like to be, I guess, have access to the specific topics. And I think she's talking about the, uh, the fundamentals course. You can buy it uh, on a USB stick and have it sent to you, and then you have access to all of that. So I think that's what she's talking about. Yeah, we, we're looking at a bunch of different programs, and we've had some some uh, really cool things that have happened within the company that we're going to be announcing uh, shortly. Um, but yes, we are definitely looking at creating a bunch of different module-type uh, products um, that can, can help people. Because I know when, when, when you're sitting there and there's smoke coming out of a device, you don't want to pop in a program that takes you 40 hours to get through and then fast forward <laughs> until you see that same smoke. We get that. Um, so yeah. what we've been trying to do is tackle a lot of the Tech Tip Tuesdays with some of the most common issues and go a little bit beyond that. Uh, like this last week we talked about, we heard there are people winterizing with windshield wiper fluid, which is dangerous. Uh, and some people just thought it might be cheaper to do that. So between our Tech Tip Tuesdays and some of the stuff coming, just, just just stay, you know, stay tuned. We're going to have some really cool stuff coming out. Very cool. That That's was exciting. a roundabout question that had no answer. <laughs> no, it did. I think so. Working I think on. it's. I think it's. Um, just follow us and, it and says wait and see. Still loading. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, tick, 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 got the tick. beach ball going on. You see the pinwheel um, right here on hey my guys, forehead. Hey guys, so for everybody out there that's watching, just make sure you follow follow the NRVTA on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram. Follow them everywhere so that you get the Tech Tip Tuesdays and you get any announcements and all that stuff because they're always putting out great stuff and... And some funny stuff. Some funny stuff. Somebody on the <laughs> chat right. said we, that the blooper video is the also, best. Oh, my gosh. We, we'd also recommend watching the Tech Tip Tuesday 
about 80% of the people that watch our channel skip to the bloopers and just watch them and figure they got the message. Watch the first part. It's great. It's got a lot of information. <laughs> tip. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, we put bloopers on the end of them because I get to work with this guy and, you know, he's the funniest person I know. So awesome. I want to know, did you ever publish that video where you had Todd slow down to 50%? Did you put that out anywhere? Uh, yes. I saw we it. Yeah. Drunken Todd. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, I died when I saw that. That was great. We'll, we'll, have, we'll uh, it happened on accident. I, we were testing a video before a class, and I accidentally put it on half speed. And he's got this tonality about him that when he slowed down, he sounds wasted. Especially when he laughs. Video bloopers and slowed it down. Absolutely. That was amazing. Guys, go find that video. It's hilarious. Yeah. Um, I'll. You know, I think we forgot to mention back when we played the clips from from Rick and Roger, we are going to have their full interview because we asked oh, yeah. them a lot of questions other than what we played. Um, and awesome. we will have the full interviews on our website for you guys to watch if you are interested in finding out their take on like how their first six months of being a tech and being an inspector yeah. are going. It's pretty impressive and they're doing extremely well and they're extremely busy so you should go watch those because a lot of people are like oh i don't know if i have the money to do the nrvta courses but you know like what they're saying is it pays for itself in just a matter of months so go yeah. check that out yeah the, yeah the full interviews are, are really good they're obviously yeah. much longer than we could play here but we wanted to have have those available to you yeah okay next question from Travis Gleaves, I have a question that I receive mixed answers when I bring it up. My new toy hauler has an electric cord reel. Is it safe to pull out just enough cord to reach the pedestal or does leaving several feet of cord wound on the reel cause it to get too hot where it melts or causes other hazards? Or does it perhaps create a, uh, a space-time vortex? That was, I just added that. <laughs> well, I guess it would depend on where you're at. now. Granted, I will. I make the recommendation: don't leave your cord outside in the sun coiled up, because you're exactly right. The more amps, or the more you're actually demanding, the more stuff you turn on, the more flow of electricity we have going through those lines. And if they're coiled up, that's just stacking heat on heat on heat. So yeah, um, I can see where people would say that. Now, if it's in the shade, wow, we take away a lot of that uh, radiant heat that we'd have. Um, for me, I would still fully unwind it and throw the excess under the rig and spread it out. I know uh, for a lot of you that have that spoiled, uh, spool, sorry, spool. Oh, all you spoiled people. Yeah, all, you you spoiled, people true. all you spoiled people with spools. Because, uh, you know, if you have that, you're glamping. <laughs> I mean, it is perfect, right? You have that in there. I mean, in the winter, do not worry about it, you know. But if you're probably in the 100 degree weather, one thing that you can do is just go ahead and test it. Test, you know, just grab, you know, part of the cable that's exposed and then go ahead and pull some out while you're using it and see if it's any hotter on the inside. If you see that it's hotter, pull it all out, stick it up under the rig and spread it out. That makes sense. <laughs> Darren said only if the flux capacitor is in the center. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, don't don't put your flux capacitor in the middle. Uh, you gotta lick it down. I believe this is our uh, this is our last question before we try to grab a couple from the chat. Um, blah blah blah. Yes, uh, Kim wanting to install an inverter in our 30 amp travel trailer. Would like to hear what your opinions are about how to set it up. We predominantly boondock uh, with a 4.6 kilowatt generator and 230 watts of solar panel, and the rest is just. But yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I put that on there. I, the 30 amp obviously doesn't require the dual channel like the uh, the Victron. What do you recommend? Do you have a recommendation for 30 amp setup? Is that any different? Well, so for me, when I look at cost, um, you either go very small or you just go big because the in betweens, um, when we're talking the inverter, they're expensive and they don't do much. In other words, you can choose between a 2000 watt inverter and a 3000 watt inverter, and the difference is maybe $150. A 3,000 watt inverter can turn on your air conditioner where a 2,000 watt really can't in the summer. So right. um, the inverter is the one thing that, especially on a 30 amp, you buy once. Batteries, you can always add, you know, especially if they're lithium, you can add batteries later on and you can add solar panels later on. 
So mm -hmm. if it's one of these, you want to try it out. What I would recommend is probably a 3000 watt inverter. Um, start off with that with a couple batteries. Your solar panels, you really want to reach the number, just depending on how you want to do this, if money were no object, you want to reach the number of solar panels to run what you're um, demanding during the day. If you can save your batteries for the nighttime, you'd be surprised at how much a little fan, you know, say at the foot of the bed or at the head of the bed that's on for 10 hours, how much it can drain these batteries, right? Because you got 10 hours of no sun and no generator. I absolutely love the idea of keeping a generator there to top off the batteries before you go to bed. But especially in a lot of places where you're boondocking via limb land or anything, they have quiet hours. So you can't run that generator at night. That's where having this, the extra batteries and the inverter takes care of the 120 volt demands. That and uh, California's passing legislation to get rid of small engines. Yeah. So unless it's a part of your RV, you won't. You won't I'm just wondering it. how high the grass is going to get. You know, in the campgrounds, because there's no lawnmowers anymore. <laughs> yeah. They're, yeah, they're pushing to go all electric, you know? <laughs> Un unintended consequences. Mm. Right. Real quick, we want to thank some of the super chats that have come through from Teresa, Tom, Mike. Oh, yeah, yeah. got those. Todd, so, Todd and C. Wilson and John DeLeo. Thank you guys so much. So, shall we jump into a couple questions that. Uh-oh. Should we just start dancing? We should do some more fun. Oh, their audio cut out in. Oh, it lost sound everywhere. Oh. Battleborn, y'all. Oh, did oh there, we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay. My bad. He there muted you guys. I don't know. I <laughs> muted ourselves. So anyhow, oh, you muted us. Can Sorry. You see, can you see the screen? Of all the RV YouTubers who have attended the NRVTA, who was the best student? Oh. <laughs> yeah, there we go with that question. So. <laughs> you know, you know okay. there are some people um, on here, you right? Have to yeah. Keep teaching. Besides, uh, besides you want, you want, changing I lanes. Oh, let's see. Tony's going to answer this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so in no particular order, here's the best students we've now, had. Well, how do we how do we quantify this? Um, like going out and doing the business, or I, I mean, it's out of all the YouTubers that have come. How, how, yeah, how and yeah, how many have gotten your bonus question right? Oh, that's a good way to, to yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, I know you stirred the most interest because I still yeah. talk about that. Here's the question Chad didn't like. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're probably going to. Here's how I think how we should. Uh, we're on their channel. Changing Lanes was the best YouTuber that came through our school. <laughs> good answer. In no Sorry, certain order. In, in, in Stacy, uh, Phil, 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 Stacy. Phil, Stacy. Wait, it's muted. On your channel, you were the best. Yeah. Yes. On our channel. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I switch. We, you know, we, had, we don't you know even we talk about ask. Mark or Trish, you know, because well, actually, you didn't take the class. No, we had a, we had an event here. No. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That That's was funny. putting us on the spot. Well, we yeah, had to. We, just, we, had we, we to. got to mess with you guys. We're just, uh, we're just playing. So Jeff Fisher asked, "Do they teach the techs how to work on Aqua Hots too?" So I know you guys. Some yeah, of that. quick question. Right. So quick answer. We are working on that. So part of what we do is if if a vendor or manufacturer actually offers a certification, we have a thing where we make sure to work with them um, that we would provide the same certification. Aqua Hot was doing a train the trainer back in 2000, late, well, early 2020 when COVID hit, and they haven't opened their doors uh, for a, um, a training other than online. That's not sufficient for us to, you know, call it a train the trainer. So, um, yes and no, and I'll explain how. Um, not in the <laughs> class do we do that, but those graduates who either become, well, get into our association, they become a, a registered technician or a certified technician. Every year we have an expo, 
And uh, part of the vendor, or part of the expo is to have vendors who come on and do their own training. Dometic does their training online with us. Uh, and Lippert does their training with us. Aquahot does their training with us. So there's a lot of vendors who do. And Aquahot does do uh, their training with us online in our expo. Awesome. So there you go. Thank you. There we go. There's your tech tip. <laughs> that one was an easier question, right? <laughs> All right. So right. This, this question is for you is for me this is from josh josh has been following us for a long time and he's a big ford fan so i'm yes. sorry to the ram people out there and th those other trucks uh, <laughs> and he wants to know if there's any news on the f-450 well the f-450 was ordered in november uh, we just got a vin and a build date so we're probably about a couple months out from our new 450 with all the massage seats and heated and cooled seats and remote start and remote. more to come yeah, Shh. there'll be a video. Don't don't give it all away. <laughs> so yeah, Josh, it's it, it's in the works. It's in the works. It's uh being built, almost. Yeah. Uh, let's see yeah, here. I saw JD's on the thread Let's do a couple too, so. quick ones because we're out of out time. Of, yes. We'll do one more here. Uh, I have a redwood, and how do I get more pressure on my shower head? And I have a, a tip. Sorry. The uh, yeah. The, I don't know how you guys feel one. about. The, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, I don't know how you guys feel about the aqua, what is it? The Oxygenics. Aero. That's it. Yes. We love that shower yes. head. Yep. Definitely do that. The next thing is, is you're, you know, if you're using your water pump, it may be a three gallons per minute. And if you're just not satisfied, you've done everything else, uh, you got equal pressure everywhere else and you still don't like it, you may want to look at upgrading your water pump from a three gallon to a five gallon. Give you a little bit more volume. Yeah, yeah. We or, we upgraded ours. Part, disconnect your water hose from your fresh water thing. Go find a fire hydrant. <laughs> do, they, do they make adapters? Okay. They they have adapters on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They can sell everything on Amazon. <laughs> from a two, two to a one to a half inch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but you know, we know. found we, actually you you taught us that um, we were uh, showering with the water pressure of the park. And you're like, well, why don't you fill up your fresh water and just use the pump? And it was like, Eureka, you know, it was perfect. Do people right. still say Eureka? I just did. So You did. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we upgraded our oh, pump to a variable pump. Locator. It works great. Somebody wanted yeah, to know so how that, you bring up the tech locator again? The tech locator. Yeah, yeah, let me uh, let me let me find that screen here. Hold, please, and we'll we'll show you guys. Just as a reminder, people were asking, how do you bring up the tech locator? It's rvtaa.org, and it looks like this. Yep, and there is also an inspector finder okay. that looks very similar, mm -hmm. uh, but this is how you can find an inspector. Maybe I, I was yeah, it's it's, it's loading. Okay. I was really excited when I saw this tech finder, uh, just because a it gives uh, the techs out there the ability to to travel and mm -hmm. update their pin and wherever they're going to be. And we get questions all the time about that. How can I find a tech? And it was always just Google. Yeah. But now we have this resource, which is awesome. That's awesome. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Now, if you go back to the NRV uh, RVTAA tech locator, somebody in the thread actually said, "I need somebody in New Orleans like right now." So all they would have to do is go there, type in their location, or uh, there'll be a drop down box that says, Will you are you willing to share your location? You say accept and it'll actually show you on the map who's close to you. Now, when this locator was in development, Todd took the reins and started doing some really cool things to make it not just a tech locator to find, you know, technicians, but he also made it to where we could kind of what do you call it, filter out certain types of technicians. You want, yeah. you want to touch on that? So the major vendors that um, uh, we work with, say, you know, again, Aquahot, they have their own training. Lippert has their own training. Um, Dometic has their own training. And they're all certified. So part of what our requirements to stay in the association as CEUs, continuing uh, education units. Typically, we, we want to make sure that our technicians are staying um, abreast of all this um, information that's out there. So what they could do is go get certified, say by Dometic. So if you wanted to find a specific Dometic certified technician, not just a certified technician, we're, we've got the system set up to where we can actually do that. You can filter that down to say Dometic or whatnot. And then, you know, that, that refines your list to those that are cert certified in that specific brand or 
or whatever there may be for that certification. And we're still kind of really, that's really cool. Right mm -hmm. now, if you search for a tech and you need a tech, search for a tech, call, call him and ask him what, what he knows how to do. Yeah. That's really cool. That's awesome. That, 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 that thing is amazing. And it's nice to see all those pins on the map there. Montana, you're out of luck. But. I well, nobody, nobody's, <laughs> nobody's uh, working in Montana right now. Um, so we're a few minutes over. Is yes. there anything else we need before we go? Well, no. Um, we just want to thank all of our moderators again. So mm -hmm. you know, a big thank you to Jason and Ray, Getaway Couple, Jesse and Corey from Finding Our Someday. Um, we have Phil and Stacy, you, me, and the RV. Of course, our awesome assistant Chris and Rick and Roger, who are the techs who we interviewed. They have also been very chatty tonight and did i miss anybody i, I know thomas and so. sheree couldn't show up because they were traveling they were stuck in traffic so um we want to thank todd and tony of course and rick and roger for letting us interview them ahead of time which was awesome and we want to thank all of you for watching the first carpool yeah, lane thank and, you to everyone who joined and thank you for putting up with we had some audio issues and some glitches but like for our first time using this technology i think it was okay We'll find out when we watch it back and we can't hear anything. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and a reminder, <laughs> please. Well. Um, they're all good. Um, and a reminder to let us know of any topic or person or persons that you think might be good guests on future carpool lanes with us. And lastly, the RV show coming up here in the Tampa area this coming week. We are going. We just don't know exactly when. So we will make some posts on social media if we're going to do anything like pop-up meetups or anything like that. Yep, so be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram because that's where we'll be posting them. Kind of last minute, hey, we're here, that kind of thing. So. And thank you to all of our Super Chats. If we missed you and forgot to say thank you or didn't see you, we're very sorry. We were just a little preoccupied today. Um, but hopefully next time we can just do a chat live. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll do that next time. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you.